everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm filming a purchasing park tickets video. I've had a lot of my friends since I came back from Walt Disney World ask me where I buy my park tickets from, which ones they recommend me buying, do I buy a combo, do I buy them single, they're just so confused. So I thought I'd do a quick video to touch on those issues because I know a lot of you probably have them as well. I will also talk about where I purchased my tickets from because I did a lot of research before I went of where I actually wanted to buy them from and which websites were the best price wise etc. So I've just filmed this once and it was like 25 minutes long. <laughs> so I'm gonna try and cut it down and do less talking. So the main park sections that you've got when you travel to Orlando is obviously Walt Disney, you have also got your Universal Parks and you have got the SeaWorld kind of section as well. So if you attempted to do every single park out of those three kind of groups you are looking at 12 days. There is six Disney parks including the two water parks, there are three Universal Parks including Volcano Bay which has just opened and there are I say two to three SeaWorld Parks officially there is three but the third one is more expensive but I will get onto that later because it can work out cheaper depending on which way you do it. Since the introduction of Fast Passes and the Memory Maker which you get free for UK customers buying anything above a 14 day unlimited ticket um, I would have probably gone for buying tickets on the gate just because we used to go quite a few times and we'd buy like we maybe miss one of the Disney parks out and things like that but nowadays if you are I'd say if you're doing more than one of the Disney or Universal parks the ultimate tickets are the way to go. The memory maker I didn't think was going to be as valuable as it was because um, we've never had it I never thought why would I need it but the pictures that we got from the four soul pass places around the parks were priceless. The moment of when you meet a character and that magic and the smile and the look on your face, you can't capture that unless you've got someone standing to one side taking pictures as well, but the photo pass people do it. And to be honest, those are my favorite pictures from meeting all the characters, not the like posy ones where we stood having a cuddle. It's the moment that we've walked in and like said hi and like, oh, it's Mickey Mouse. Honestly, they are the best pictures. And then you've got the fast passes. Fast passes proved invaluable. Some of the queues were ridiculously long, especially if they were doing maintenance on some of the rides. Magic Kingdom, I think the day we went was ridiculously busy for some reason, don't know why, it was just kind of one of those freak days. Um, all of the rides at least had an hour on it, if not longer, more like 90 minutes to 180, 120, 120 for two hours. <laughs> really, really long rides, like really, really long queues and you just want to get round things, you don't want to be stood in queues all day. So the fast passes were amazing. You get three a day and you can rebook once you've used those three. I'm going to do a whole separate video on fast passes and the way to go about it because there were some fast passes that I'd booked that mm, probably didn't really need a fast pass for and others that I didn't book that I really, really did need a fast pass for. So I'll go over all of that in a completely separate video that might be up next week or the week after. Those things that come with the ultimate ticket kind of make that ticket so much better value. As well as obviously those things you can park up with these tickets so you can go to say Magic Kingdom on a morning, go back, get changed, then head over to Epcot to see Illuminations over the um, World Showcase Lake. And that flexibility means that you can just hop between parks, do which restaurants you want to do, and you're not really like, oh, we need to be at Magic Kingdom from nine in the morning till, I was gonna say wishes at night, but it's not wishes anymore, until happily ever after shows at night to get our money's worth. You can hop, you can do what you like. You are not kind of restricted to one park a day, which is really, really good. 
and that is a bonus as well for the Universal Parks. That 14 day unlimited ticket obviously offers you the park hopper ability. Previously we used to buy a two day ticket on the gate and it didn't offer the park hopper ability but with the park hopper ability you are able to go to na platform nine and three quarters in King's Cross in Universal Studios and travel on the Hogwarts Express to Islands of Adventure to Hogsmeade. Loved it, absolutely loved it. If I was park hopping I was not walking between the two parks, I was getting on the Hogwarts Express. We did it the other way as well, we went from Hogsmeade to King's Cross both are absolutely fantastic, really recommend them. If I was going back, I probably wouldn't bother with SeaWorld. I wasn't too fussed on SeaWorld when we went and the Aquatica Water Park was not a patch on the, um, what the word is? The Disney ones. <laughs> Why couldn't I think of the word Disney? Um, it wasn't a patch on the Disney ones and from what I've seen, it's not a patch on the Volcano Bay at Universal Studios either, but, if you are going to SeaWorld, they also have another park which is called Discovery Cove. I love Discovery Cove. Discovery Cove is where you can do a swim with the dolphins and you can also do non-swims. You no longer have to have a swim, like a person in your party who is doing a dolphin swim, which used to be a requirement. You can go there just for an all-inclusive day. Anyway, that vlog should be up this week, hopefully. So subscribe so you don't miss it hit the notification bell um but yeah i absolutely love it it's an all-inclusive day it is more expensive and you have to pre-book it you cannot just walk up and decide you want to go to discovery cove that day they have a limited number of places per day so i would probably book it at least three to six months in advance more towards the six month mark to make sure that you get the date that you wanted book it towards the beginning of your holiday because with all of the Discovery Cove tickets which is why although it's more expensive because it's about £150 per person ish for a non-day non-swim ticket you get included in your ticket um admission to Aquatica and SeaWorld so if you're looking to do Aquatica and SeaWorld it might be cheaper or not too much more expensive to also do Discovery Cove so look into that as well and that's something about the big, big bundle packages for tickets that you need to bear in mind. Make sure you know which parks it covers because I've known someone who has purchased the big, big park bundle which has had your 14-day your, uh, Disney, your 14-day Universal and 14-day SeaWorld, Aquatica and everything. And then... A couple of months later they've decided oh we want to go to Discovery Cove what you get free tickets into SeaWorld and Aquatica with Discovery Cove and you've just paid for them and they are not free <laughs> like people seem to think oh but it's part of the bundle yes it is but you can buy them all separately the bundles do save you a little bit of money but not hundreds so they are definitely not free. So make sure you've planned where you want to go before you kind of take the plunge and buy a, like a bundle package because you need to make sure that you're not duplicating things essentially, just wasting money. So yeah, that is that. You need to plan where you want to go. You need to make sure you know what your tickets do. And where I purchase my tickets from is, I'll just grab it. So I purchase all of my tickets from Florida Ticks this time. This video is 100% not sponsored. However, I would adore to work with them because that basically means that I'm going back to Florida. So yeah, I ordered all of our tickets from Florida Ticks. The tickets came in this little wallety thing. Just check that this hasn't got any details on. No, it doesn't. So it just comes in here, then all your tickets come in this little pouch. These are our uh, Discovery Cove tickets that are still in there. Um, one thing I will say about purchasing park tickets is some websites do not send you the original tickets. So Florida Ticks do, obviously, because I've done a lot of research on it. Um, so for Disney and Universal, we got sent our actual park tickets. So we had the little cards, so we had no bother on the first day when we got to the park. We just walked straight to the gate, boop, finger, in. 
And the same with the Universal Parts, I had absolutely no issues with any of the tickets. We didn't have to go to customer services to exchange a voucher for an actual park ticket because that does happen quite a lot online. A lot of the websites don't actually tend to physical tickets they will send you paper vouchers which you then have to go and collect your ticket once you are there the tickets from florida ticks as well you can link to magic bands they are fantastic I really recommend picking up magic band as soon as you get into the parks but yeah i had a little issue with one of my tickets i'll be completely honest with you there was an issue with some of our tickets and Florida Ticks went above and beyond to correct it. There was one of our tickets, it was my mum's ticket, when I was trying to book fast passes. So I checked about two weeks before to make sure my fast passes and everything were working, that I was able to book things. And my mum's ticket wasn't working and I couldn't understand why. It was linked in every other way that all the other tickets were linked. So I rang Disney and Disney said that there was an issue with the ticket and I had to ring the supplier which just instantly filled me full of dread because I thought oh, this is going to be a nightmare and this is not what I wanted to start my holiday with. So I rang Florida Ticks and the lady on the other end of the phone was absolutely brilliant, took all my information, didn't try and palm me off at all and then I think it was about a week later I had a phone call from them and said look I need more information from you I'm currently on the phone at Disney we are sorting it out and they on that day went again above, above and beyond to be honest I was at work that day I was getting text message updates off them I was getting phone calls off them all day and because I was at work I couldn't pick up my phone so I texted back and said I'm really sorry but can I ring you back at like five o'clock and she was like it's absolutely fine we finished at five but it's you're more than welcome to ring me back rang them back got some more information to her she was like look I've been on the phone at Disney for two hours there's a long wait we will get this sorted for you today and this was about half five and I thought mm, it's not gonna happen today is it that night I think I got a it was either a phone call or a text message from Florida Ticks at about nine o'clock after I got home from the gym to say that everything was sorted they've tested out my fast passes it was working fine and if I had absolutely any more issues just to ring them and that for me the fact that it was like nine o'clock at night and they had gone to that level of like staying back making sure things were sorted just blew me away that is the customer service you want that is what you expect when you go on a disney holiday you want that kind of service that is the service that disney kind of instilled that they provide and to go through like a third party such as florida takes although they're not disney you kind of accept expect the same level of um service and they 100 percent delivered like i say we had no issues with the tickets um apart from mum had an issue like the first day that we were there you've probably seen it in my epcot vlog i was like ah oh, mum can't get in <laughs> but literally all the man did was scan her ticket it was fine it took us two seconds to sort out in fact i didn't even have to sort anything out he just took mum's ticket off her i don't know what he did with it but from that time on, we had no more issues trying to get into any of the parks. And to be honest, I think it might have been something that I'd done to break the ticket. It wasn't something direct, like the Flor Florida Ticks had done either intentionally or anything. It was just one of those things. But they handled it impeccably. And to be honest, that was the moment when I thought, never booking my tickets with anybody else unless it's Disney Direct. So apart from the fact that the customer service from Florida Ticks is amazing i found them the cheapest online there were some sites that were like even cheaper but again they gave you vouchers not actual tickets so florida ticks i found cheaper than attraction tickets direct marginally i must admit but they were cheaper another thing that i was really impressed with was the fact that my tickets obviously your disney tickets especially if you're buying for like a whole family you're looking at around well Disney tickets Universal tickets like once everything's added up you're looking at around a thousand pound being sent in the post essentially 
you wouldn't expect if you'd bought a thousand pound camera you wouldn't expect them just to bung that in royal mail would you and it hadn't really dawned on me until the tickets had arrived that they'd actually sent them by courier and once i'd realized that they were sending them by courier i was like oh yeah that's actually quite a valuable package and the fact that they did do that was and obviously i thought about that because i well hadn't is just another level of service in my opinion so I absolutely love Florida Ticks and like I said I'll be buying from them in the future you do get vouchers and things inside of your package as well we didn't really use many of them apart from at the premium outlet which were, did actually prove quite useful because we got an additional 10% off at Levi because we'd spent so much <laughs> um but it is worth it it is worth having that there if you can but yes if anyone's got any questions about purchasing tickets don't know if they're buying the right thing want to link some websites that they're not sure about uh, whatever it is if you're confused link it or comment it down below because I want to help <laughs> I know so many people that get so confused over it and just don't know what to do because they've never been before which is completely understandable so just comment down below if you've got any questions and I will be more than happy to answer them and help but next time I am planning on filming my fast pass tips and tricks because I definitely learned a lot by doing it for the first time ever this time so I really want to share that knowledge with you. So I hope you're enjoying my little Disney World tips and tricks videos. They are all in one playlist on my channel if you've missed any of them or if you want to go back to it as a reference like later on. They are all there for you. Um, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any of my Disney videos that are coming out in the future. And I will see you all very soon. Thursdays are when my Walt Disney World vlogs go up. So do not miss them. Hit the notification so you don't miss one. And I will see you all very soon. Thank you so much for watching. Bye. I'm gonna be myself or I could be someone else. No one stopping me now. I'm gonna skip my breaks. I'm gonna make mistakes. Just what I do when I'm out, so...